In this video, we talk about the simplest type of nonlinear function, functions called quadratics. Quadratics arise fairly often in practice, and it's quite important to know what they look like and how to work with them. So we'll be seeing how to graph them in a number of ways. This will involve solving quadratic equations at times, something that you may have seen before. We'll also see how to solve and factor quadratics in different ways. We usually write quadratic functions in this form that you see right here, f of x equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b and c are constants. We'll generally, generally be dealing with real constant. Now depending on the values of a, b and c, the function has different values and its graph will appear differently. So there's a few examples in the picture here. You see a fairly steep orange one, some more shallow quadratics, the red and the green, and the blue, something in between. And they'll move from side to side and up and down and change their concavity depending on what a, b and c are. Now that's a quadratic function. A quadratic equation takes the form given here, where we've got the f of x set equal to 0. So 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. There is a slight difference between a quadratic equation and a quadratic function. Now a, b and c in this case determine the different solution values for the equation, or the values of x that make the equation true. Solving the quadra quadratic equation is equivalent to finding where the corresponding quadratic function crosses the horizontal axis. So remember back here with our examples, on the blue curve, for example, it crossed the axis at two points. The red curve at just one, the green at two points, and the orange curve, strangely, doesn't cross the axis at all. So depending on our a, b, and c values, our quadratic function will cross the axis a different number of times and those places will be found by solving the corresponding quadratic equation. So how do we figure out what those values are? Well, we can use the quadratic formula. You've probably seen that before. That's this one down here. Otherwise, you can use factorization. So some people are a little bit more handy at factorizing things than they are at using the formula or remembering it, and either one will work for you. So the quadratic formula, first of all, is just this formula here that tells us the solution values of that quadratic equation we need to substitute in our b, a, and c values and figure out what this little sum here on the right is. And that'll give us the two, possibly, values of x that solve the quadratic equation. Let's try out an example. We're going to use the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic equation. 0 equal to 2x squared minus 2x minus 12. So here we have a equal to 2, b equal to minus 2, and c equal to minus 12. So we'll find that the two x values, if there are two, will be equal to minus b, which will become 2 in a moment, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. We need to divide all of that by 2 multiplied by a. So pause the video now, just give yourself a quick bit of practice of simplifying that, and see if you come up with the same as me. Okay, so I've got 2, our minus minus 2, and then plus or minus the square root becomes 4 plus 96, and we can see that's the square root of 100, which is just 10, and that's all over 4. So we've got 2 plus 10 is 12 on 4, and we know that that's going to be 3. And we've also got 2 minus 10, so that's minus 8 over 4, which is minus 2. So our final two solution values are minus 2 and 3. And you can substitute those back and check if you like. Substitute them into the quadratic equation and check that it's equal to zero. So those are the two values that we get for our solution. So now let's move on to looking at actually plotting these things, these quadratic functions. There's a couple of quick ways you can do it, which you might want to get used to using yourself just for playing around. They can be useful sometimes when you're studying. Google can plot functions. All you have to do is type plot and then the function you want to plot, for, for example, ax squared plus bx plus c, but put some values in for a, b, and c, like I've done here. And once you've done that, you'll find that Google will just throw out a nice plot for you on a set of axes that it thinks are appropriate, and you can scan around and find out things about the values on that function. Another really great one is a site called Wolfram Alpha. So again, Wolfram Alpha, you just type plot ax squared plus bx plus c with your a and b values, like I've done here and it will give you a plot 
It'll also give you a bunch of other information which is hidden down here, which I haven't shown on this slide. But you can check that out yourself afterwards. So that's a couple of ways you can quickly plot a quadratic. What about the old fashioned way? Well, we can sketch a plot of that function by hand if we need to. And we basically need three pieces of information, these three here. We need to know the concavity. And that just means, does the graph look like this? Or does it look like this? Does it open downwards or upwards? So if A is greater than zero, that's a little A out there. If A is positive, then we have something opening upwards, like this one. It'll go down to a minimum. If A is less than zero, if A is negative, we have this sort of shape, opening downwards, hitting up towards a maximum value. So that's the first piece of information. The second piece is where does the vertex occur? So where is this point? We can figure that out by finding x equal to minus b on 2a, and then the corresponding function value f of minus b on 2a. And finally, the third piece of information is the axis intercepts. And we already know how to do this. We just solve the corresponding quadratic equation to figure out the 0, 1, or 2 possible values. And we also need to find the vertical intercept, the y value at which the function crosses the y-axis. And that's just equal to c, the number right on the end. Okay, so that's what we need to sketch our quadratic functions. Let's have a look at an example. Have we got pausing the video now and try to do that one yourself? Just refer back to the previous slide if you like, having a look at the concavity, the vertex, and the axis intercepts. Okay, so first of all, the concavity. We can see that the value of a is two, and that's greater than zero. So we're gonna have a curve that looks in this sort of shape, opening upwards with a minimum value at the vertex. The vertex itself, x is equal to minus b on two a, so we get one on two for that by substituting in the a and b values. Then just evaluate the function at that x value, f of a half, substitute in, and you'll get minus 25 on two. And for the axis intercepts, the y-intercept is just the constant value from the end of the function, or in other words, f of 0, so that's minus 12. And the x-intercept, conveniently, we've already solved this quadratic a couple of, of examples back, was exactly this one. So we know that our x-intercepts will be at minus 2 and 3. So now we can take all that information, put it together on a set of axes, and we can bring together our sketch of the graph of this function. First up, set up an x and y set of axes. Then we're going to need some axis limits or some tick marks along the axes. And we need it to be wide enough so that we can fit in all the way back to x equals minus 2 and all the way across to x equals plus 3. So I think minus 3 to 3 is probably a reasonable idea here. So it can go something like this and then maybe just slot in a couple of intermediate steps. We also need to go down as far as minus 12. So maybe if we could do something like this, down to minus 12, and that'd make that minus six. We can have up to six and 12 up the top here as well. So we've got things set up, and we can start populating our little points that we've figured out now. Okay, so there we go. We have our two x-intercepts at minus two and three, the y-intercept here at minus 12, and the turning point of the vertex just here at half and minus 25 on two. Now all we've got to do is grab the pen and join the dots together, trying to get some sort of shape like this. So there we go, the blue line giving us our curve for that quadratic. And that's just one example of sketching a quadratic, basically by hand. Just need those three points, or those three pieces of information that we talked about a couple of slides back. Okay, so what to do now? Um, have a look at Google or Wolfram Alpha and play around with making some graphs of quadratics for a variety of different coefficient values. See what happens when you graph different functions. See if you can get a graph that doesn't cross the horizontal axis at all, one that crosses it twice, like we've just done, and try to get one that just touches it just at one point. Once you've had a go at that, try out some of the worksheet problems for the video, and also, again, like usual, write down in your notebook any questions that you think you might need to ask afterwards or things you might need to figure out yourself.